my iPhone 6 finally died. Died a terrible death, and then a couple weeks later my wife's iPhone 6 died. <laughs> so, decided to open it up, of course, that's what I do. Um, so, what I wanted to talk about was uh, located up here in the corner uh, is the camera. Oops, sorry. Is the camera. So, the little camera module sits in here. It's got some little ribbon cable and a little, little connector. And uh, if I can't zoom in a little bit on that. Oh, that's all the zooming I'm going to get. So, I'll have to change to a macro lens. But um, I actually used to work on these. I worked for Agilent and um, we were building um, CMOS imagers for companies to make webcams out of and we also made image processors for digital cameras and decided to put them together and make uh, modules for mobile phones and uh, we had some customers who wanted those things so uh, we built the world's first cell phone camera um, back in the year 2000, I believe it was. Might have been 99, but I think it was the year 2000. It was for Sony Ericsson, um, and uh, I don't remember the model number of the phone. I think it was a T. Oh gosh, it's a long time ago. T8, T830, or I don't remember. It was a candy, candy bar. What they used to call candy, candy bar phones, a stick phone. And uh, it had the world's first uh, VGA, I, think, I believe, well, maybe it wasn't even VGA yet. No, it wasn't VGA, I think it was SIF. So it was quarter, quarter VGA. <laughs> oh, geez, really bad. And uh, took terrible pictures. We had a review done by, I think, PC Magazine or something, said it was like watching Neil Armstrong land on the moon again. Um, but it was the very, very first one. And then later on, we learned to build VGAs and megapixels and more megapixels and better and better and better. And a lot of the people who worked on those projects went on to other companies to build even better ones. So, But anyway, I uh, was involved in some of the very first cell phone cameras in the world. And uh, this is a very, very nice one. And I thought we'd see if we can't take it apart and at least examine some of the components and see what's going on. Um, yeah, maybe I've changed to a macro lens. Okay, that's a little bit closer. Uh, you can see the module here. Uh, and uh, backside's pretty boring. Now, I don't know if we can open these things up easily or not, uh, but I am interested in the lens. And um, I, I was an optics engineer. At the time, I worked a little bit on lenses, not a lot, but a little bit on these lenses. I do understand them. I was more involved in the image processing side of things, so adjusting all the parameters to make a good looking picture and uh, doing the color science, making sure that it, when it took a picture, it looked good. So that's what I spent most of my days doing um, and managing a bunch of people. But let's see if we can't open this thing up. So I'm not having a lot of luck. I did find some little metal tabs here I could fold out. Um, it's important that these things be shielded. Any, any noise gets in the circuitry. And also any light can get into the back side of the camera. In fact, some of the very first cameras we built um, had light leakage from the backside, and you could actually uh, see the PC board trace that the chip was mounted on. It kind of um, illuminated the backside of the part and caused an image. Um, sometimes when you put it inside the actual cell phone, it blocked enough light that things were all okay, but when you had it out on the bench testing it, you could get light, light in from the backside. So let me see if I can't get in a little farther. All right, that little piece of uh, metal came off. Now we can see the back side. Uh, there's a flex PC board that attaches. And looks like it's got some glue on it and stuff, so I think we're just gonna have to go uh, caveman on it and open it up. All right, so I was able to kind of crack it in half. So on the left-hand side here is the, is the imager, and on the right-hand side is the lens. So I think we're gonna need more magnification, so let's, uh, Let's go over to the microscope. All right. So I think you can see the lens there. 
and a little thing here that's kind of oops kind of making rainbows is the imager um, so we can't focus any on it eh. oh there we go let's see a little bit better if my fat fingers in the way that is the image sensor on that side and looks like there's a uh, capacitors around it so uh, that's interesting and then on this side we've got the lens and um, let's uh, oh there we go looks like there's a small connection with some tiny little wires between the two. Now what that is, is the autofocus. Um, it's much like a speaker. Um, a speaker has a coil and it has a permanent magnet and as you energize the coil the, the uh, cone moves in and out. Well, optics can work the same way. There's several ways of doing autofocus but one of the ways is a voice coil actuation. And so this has a coil and you energize the coil, the lens moves in and out. And that's the way the focus is done. Um, there's also a spring in there to kind of balance things out and everything, but that's what those that's what those tiny little wires that go between the two sides is. Interesting. So if we flip this thing over, we can kind of see the lens there. And uh, this because of the point width. This thing here is the lens holder and this is the lens mount and in between uh, is the coil and, and so this outer part here moves up and down with relation to the base. Um, and then there's uh, pieces of glass and pieces of plastic. So a lot of these lenses are a combination of glass and plastic. Um, I believe this one is probably a five element lens, so there's five pieces of lenses um, that make up the entire lens. And some of those are going to be made out of plastic and some of those are going to be made out of glass. And the reason for that is that it's very easy to manufacture glass precision in a very precise way. You grind it. And plastic you can make very strange shapes. It doesn't have to be um, doesn't have to be circular, it can be a spheric. And so a combination of those two things make up lenses these days. So let's see if we can't remove that lens from its housing. All right, so you can see the actual uh, windings uh, here, here on the side of the lens. I, I've pulled the lens out and rotated it 90 degrees and so you can see the little windings on the on the sides. And let's see if we can't show you any more of that. It's very difficult to do this macro photography but yeah there you go. So we have a lens unit so from from uh, from this side, which is the front of the lens, to this side, which is the back of the lens, so the imager would be back here, and the front of the lens is the part that takes the picture. Um, and there's, like I said, five pieces of glass or plastic inside that thing. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to open that up, but I might be able to find something online to kind of describe to you what's, uh, what's going on there. And then I have one thing to show you that I think you'll find interesting. So, yeah. Uh, I don't think we can really see much down this way. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. The pixel size of these uh, sensors are getting really small down to a micron or sub-micron. And so they're very difficult to see without a really high-powered microscope, which this one is not. Uh, but, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, here's just a website. And uh, it shows you a typical camera lens, and here, here's a cross-section of the lens. So you can see the lens elements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just a number of elements. This would be an all-glass design from the old days here. Um, but let me see if I can't find you a, uh, 
a uh, oh, here's a good example. Here's a picture of uh, looks like maybe an iPhone 6 or something. And here's the uh, here's a kind of a breakdown of all the things go inside there. One, two, three, four, five. So there's five different lens elements, and then an outer piece of glass to protect it, and then the imager is on the inside here. And so that's what we would find if we ripped that thing apart, these one, two, three, four, five. They're kind of uh, all stacked together, uh, like a stack of poker chips. And, um, uh, and then here's a picture of kind of the things that I used to do as a uh, lens designer, optics engineer. Uh, this is a ray trace through a lens. So this is a one, two, three, four element lens. And you can see that uh, this lens here is sort of spherical in nature. This one you can see doesn't really look like a sphere. It's a little bit more bulgy than a sphere. And then this element here is a really wild S-shaped curve called a field flattener. And uh, so uh, the optics programs, uh, things like Code 5 and ZMAX and uh, things like that are used to design these things. And it, uh, it's half science, half art uh, to design these lenses. and um, it's even trickier to have them manufactured, so uh, that's that's one, and then some other examples here of uh, of uh, other ray traces for other lenses. So anyway, that's what's inside your cell phone camera. <laughs>